What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and today we are going to be finishing up all the things that we need to do to get this Blazer Street legal. Um, we're going to take care of the transmission pan, filter, and gasket. We're going to put in the second uh, gear Corvette servo mod. We're going to install these long tube headers and then build out a full exhaust. As well as install a, a few trim pieces I picked up from the junkyard this morning. Just to kind of round everything out, uh, make sure we have seat belts, uh, stuff like that. Now the reason that building a full exhaust to pass inspection is required on this truck, both sides, the header, uh, cast header manifolds, the factory ones, are cracked, they're leaking, um, and honestly a full set of stainless steel headers was only 98 bucks shipped from uh, eBay. The only downside is I'm going to have to break out the TIG and weld in an O2 bung because this is a TBI truck, these are uh, Carby style headers. Um, so we're going to have to add a bung and then uh, all the parts from Summit should be here later this week. We're going to just basically build a full exhaust with a cat, straight 3 inch pipe into a turbo muffler. Nothing super special, nothing like crazy, um, but it will help quiet down uh, the truck a little bit. It'll uh, hopefully buy us a little bit of power and most importantly it's going to meet and pass the emissions and sound requirements for the county. So. That being said, let's get into it. Uh, I don't know how bad pulling these uh, stock headers is gonna be. It's about 100 degrees and 90% humidity out here right now. So, so then to it, just to do it. Okay, basically to remove the headers, there's two, four, six bolts go through here into the head. Basically, we're just gonna unscrew all of them and then get under the truck and start removing uh, the rest of the exhaust. Some of it we're just going to cut off, some of it we're going to unbolt if we can. Whoever owned this exhaust was definitely doing some Bo and Luke shit. Um, this fucking poor Y pipe is all bent up. Been re welded a couple of times from being mashed up. I mean, it's kinked almost shut right there. Um, somebody put in a Magnaflow cat, a little glass pack. But this is where our main exhaust leak was. This front cylinder here, you can tell when this probably got smashed, probably broke some of this because cast iron's pretty brittle. But we're gonna replace all of that with this shiny stainless steel shit. Can't believe these are only a hundred bucks. But I guess we're gonna go find out how well they fit. Well, there's the first header in. Um, we're gonna definitely gonna have some trouble with spark plug wires, I think. But, and I gotta find a new bolt to hold this in because it's not really uh, accessible anymore because of the way the header's designed. Okay, well, we've got one side of the exhaust in. The other side we're not gonna put in yet because I gotta uh, weld on that, uh, that O2 bung. I still need to buy that. Uh, or I still need to get it uh, or to come in. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install this. We're gonna put in a new filter, a new gasket, and a new pan on the transmission. Um, now this pan was only about 35 bucks, uh, but the one thing that makes it special compared to the factory pan is that it has a drain bolt. This isn't a higher capacity pan, this isn't anything special, it literally is a stock pan with a factory drain bolt, uh, magnetic drain bolt location. Now the reason that's so valuable is a lot of times you'll go off-roading and you'll get water or crap and uh, into uh, the trans pan if, you're, if your vents aren't good. And I have no idea where they even are on this truck. Um, but it just makes it a lot easier because um, you can buy cases of transmission fluid from Transstar for I think like 60 bucks for 12 quarts of Dex 3. And you can just swap it out. Any sort of shifting issue, just fucking fresh fluid drain it. You don't have to replace the filter every time. Um, but you can only do that if you have a drain bolt uh, and the factory pan does not. I got this pan in. Um, we're going to drop all of that, refill it right now. Um, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to test drive the truck until I get all the exhaust built. Um, but this is going to be kind of a messy, shitty thing to do. And so we're going to wrap up the day with today. And this mess is why train plugs are great. But anyway. There's our valve body. Everything looks to be in good shape. This gasket fell apart and was clearly leaking like a fucking mess down here. Um, the filter came out, so you can see it's in the pan right there. 
problem is this little o-ring piece didn't i gotta fish that out next then this factory fresh filter can go all up in there okay here's our new transmission pan gasket all installed uh, i think the official torque specs like nine or ten foot pounds there you basically just tighten it until it's tight um, you can see the gasket poking out a little bit uh, cross pattern so one two three four all the way around i'm gonna give it one more go around make sure i got everything tight uh, and then we can move on to the second gear corvette servo we're on the passenger side of the vehicle now the second gear corvette servo lives behind this guy inside of there there's a c-clip that pulls out and then it basically lets you remove the whole assembly and then we can replace the uh, parts on the bench so that's kind of what it looks like Unfortunately, this truck has this weird transfer case support beam thing. We got to remove to be able to remove it out. But here's kind of the uh, the C clip that pops out, and then here's the O-ring you got to pull on to get it to compress. And I'll show you guys all of this when we uh, go on the bench and reassemble it. So here's kind of what the whole assembly looks like. This outer cover has a blue O-ring in here, and basically once you pry this up and you break that uh, lock ring loose. You have to pull the o-ring tight or when i remove them i usually just break them and pull them out otherwise there's a lip so that this can't release itself uh, inside of there there's this little guy got a little little viton seal we're going to clean everything up it lives in here like that and then these are the this is the the two pieces of this uh, of the servo right here which is these guys and that's what we're going to replace with these guys. And I'm going to feel extra stupid. These are already Corvette servos. So we got these uh, glide rings. Uh, well, that's the difference right there. It's this surface area in here, I think. So this is the factory thing, and we're going to replace it with this this Corvette servo. And this surface area is what we're kind of keyed in on. So we got to take this guy off and replace it um, with this one so need a screwdriver pop this loose to make sure not to lose it that comes off that comes off that comes off and then there's another c-clip type deal in here try to remove this without Dabbing yourself in the face or having it shoot off in outer space. Like that. So now we can throw shit. Now we should be Okay, first step for reassembly is to reassemble this guy and this kind of uh, C clamp slash vice arrangement is usually my favorite for doing transmission jobs and shit like this and then you just kind of like that like that just make sure it's in its groove now we can release this guy it's nice it should automatically center because the spring seat tap it a few times make sure it's good so then we have this shaft this goes like that just got to get it straightened out uh, let's see I'm trying to clean everything as we go here next step is this little guy so spring goes first then goes washer then goes little c-clip um, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do this with my hand yeah Okay, cool, so that little C-clip's in. Now, in our kit, we have these, um, I believe they're Viton little sliders. And the way that I normally do this is I basically just pre-lube them a little bit. As well as, this is just clean ATF in a squeeze bottle. Stuff's great for all sorts of stuff. So then these little guys go in there, a little cut, and then this guy goes right here, 
in his little cut, and I always rotate them. I don't know that it necessarily matters on this one, but I always make them so that the cuts are... Anytime you have a transmission seal like this, you want the cuts to be uh, 180 degrees apart from each other if you can. That way, if there's a leak path somewhere, um, it would have to go around both sides. So, there we go. Now remember, these things are, are under a little bit of pressure. So, here's our old one. Here's our new one. This needs to slide in like so. And the trick is getting it over those little o-ring thing without pinching anything or ripping anything. And it's just a matter of finesse. Okay. Um, and now that's in there. This brown o-ring, we're going to sauce it up a little bit. It goes in her. And then these pieces are left over. And this is our cap. We're going to clean this. And then this blue o-ring goes in here. So I went ahead and stamped it CS for Corvette Servo. It's pretty common in industry. Uh, if you see rebuilt transmissions for sale, if they have a red um, second gear cover servo, uh, that usually means that they've had this modification done to them. Not always, but usually. Um, I always like to I have this little set of stamps and I like to stamp things. So I just went ahead and stamped it CS and just gave it a quick little tack of uh, a red spray. That K, that way I know that, you know, um, if this uh, drivetrain moves on for me, which hopefully at some point it will, um, it'll be easily identifiable as a modified transmission. So this little thing basically just acts as a bearing. So the next step before we can install this side of the header, we got to weld in our O2 bung starts with just marking basically this is as close to factory location as I can it's basically facing slightly up and away from the motor uh, there's a nice cavity down in the engine bay plenty of space so this guy basically just drops in there uh, and then we're going to weld it in uh, with the TIG we'll see how I do I haven't used the TIG in probably over a year um, but since this is these two are stainless we'll use the TIG uh, TIG that bad boy in I got a brand new Bosch oxygen sensor. Um, these one wire old school jobbies for the TBR are like 20 bucks. So I figured why not? Plus the old one is uh, it's pretty crusty looking. Um, one thing to keep in mind is these come with plugs and when you weld them, you wanna make sure you leave the plug in there. It'll help keep uh, slag out as well as help this thing maintain its, uh, its shape. So we got the seat belts in, or the uh, seat belt catches in. Um, these are really designed for buckets, but we're gonna just pass them through the seat and they'll be fine. They match up with these seat belts, um, these old GM style seat belts. So, so what I decided to do was basically use standoff tubes. This is 0.095 wall, one inch square tubing. We're gonna weld this on here and then I cut these slightly shorter and at an angle so they provide about two and three quarter out that's hot two and three quarter uh, lift um, because this kind of sits in a little bit of a valley up here um, so we're gonna weld this on and then we're gonna through bolts to the floor like it was before um, some of you might say okay is that really that much better than running it through a chunk of wood two things first of all 
if a visual inspection goes, the inspector goes and looks at it and is like, what the fuck, your seat's bolted through a piece of wood. That's not good. Uh, this is better than that. And secondly, it just makes me feel better. Um, the more I look at this and the setup, the more I'm convinced that uh, a new set of good seats is going to be a sooner rather than later thing. Um, but right now, I just need to get the truck through inspection, and I don't need new seats to do that. These will work just fine for that. So I'm going to get these welded on, and then we're going to through bolt them through the floor because I can't use the factory hole, so i got to actually use like a nut and a bolt. So seats and seat belts are in. I can't say that they inspire a ton of confidence, but uh, at least they're not mounted on wood anymore. They're just through bolted uh, into the floor. Um, like I said, this bench seat is temporary. It's set at a nice cozy distance. Can't really complain too much. Seat belts work. And uh, so that takes care of that part. So I thought you guys might get a kick out of this. We got the DB meter up on the phone. You should be able to see it. So regular conversation. 60 db my voice not too bad let's fire this thing up with open headers and see where it's at so just idling we're at busy traffic bad only 83 db at full blast it definitely feels louder than that now while the ground's still wet i figured i'd take care of some of this interior stuff i need to find a way to mount this a little more rigidly i added this uh bumper that i got from the junkyard just kind of make it a little bit more comfortable give me somewhere to grab also it's missing its grab handle the other side uh has one but it, it's broken so i took it off um, so what we're going to do is, the one I bought from the junkyard doesn't fit. Apparently the uh, Suburbans had a much shorter uh, grab handle. You can see this is the one from the Suburban, and this is the one from the, the Blazer. So I have this. This is just an old, crummy, faded leather belt. Uh, I've actually been kind of thinking about throwing it out when I clean out my closet. But this will work out perfectly. We're going to... Just use a knife, make ourselves some new brown straps, and uh, bolt them to the door. So now we have uh, greased the windows so they move a little better. All this is back in. You can see my little homemade leather belt. That side, the bottom carpet was gross and the handle was gross, so I replaced those. That one obviously is a more nicer, complete door card. This one's really beat to shit, but it's a lot better now because we have this mounted and we have this mounted. Unfortunately, the rubber piece is missing over here. I still need to secure this corner a little better um, when I get a chance to do that. And I want to get a, um, a new screw-on thingy for this side. But uh, if we put the key on, this is a lot faster in both directions uh, than it was the first time. So let's look over there. Going down goes back up just as smoothly so it was kind of a pain in the dick to get the door cards off but uh, since the truck doesn't currently have AC these windows are pretty much the only uh, relief I get so um, there's pretty important to me that they worked worked well plus having this to close the door is gonna make it a lot better um, I actually have a new window for this we got to get all this like silicon and shit out and figure out what you're supposed to use to glue the actual window into this frame but i do have a new window for this um so we will replace that i don't need that to pass inspection pretty much the only two items that are remaining is i need to build the exhaust because i won't pass inspection with open headers um, and the other thing is i can't get the high beams to work now i assume that uh you turn that on this is supposed to turn on the high beams um, you know, our windshield wipers work, all that kind of stuff works. Um, that motor's a little weak, but I think as long as it actually squirts something, it's probably okay. So, I got the entire steering column apart, only to realize that this thing is not fixable. And so, basically, I spent an extra hour reassembling everything. And then figured out that down here, there's a little, there's a little joint. 
and that controls the lights. So if we turn the lights on, you can see the low beams are on right now. If we turn the high beams on, the high beams come on. Let me see if the camera will catch the, you can see the flash in the background. More importantly, in the gauge cluster, high beam, low beam, high beam, low beam. Uh, okay, so the next thing on the agenda is to build the exhaust. Now, this is kind of where this exhaust tube comes out, kind of faces down, which isn't great. Um, now this has a kick out on this side to basically put an exhaust pipe through, conceivably. Or, what I was hoping to do was actually bring this up like that, not quite that dramatically, I was definitely gonna shorten this, but basically, Bring this up here, allowing us to put our catalytic converter up here and basically keep the rest of the, the pipe and all the exhaust up here inside the frame. That way, kind of no matter where we're off-roading, it shouldn't matter because the muffler is going to live somewhere up here. That way, we're never, even if we slam down on the frame, the frame is going to be our lowest point of contact. We don't really have to worry too much about... Um, that the other thing is on the other side we're in an even tighter situation i think because of this transfer case um and this is going to be the side that's interesting because i don't know if i'm going to be able to fit the uh, catalytic converter up there and i'm not really sure if i if i want to fit the catalytic converter up there but I really would like to have everything up above the up above the uh, frame rail. So this is our catalytic converter. It's a Flowmaster. Um, these honeycomb ones, they're about 50 bucks a piece. I have always had kind of mixed feelings about this and like how well they actually work. Like pretty splattery welds. But on you know, on the website, on Summit, they have a lot of really good reviews, and a few people have uh, good videos on them specifically showing how well they lower um, NOx and stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to run them. The thing is, you want this as close as you can to the headers. In fact, on most modern vehicles, the uh, Cali converter is actually built into the header. Um, so we want it as close as we can to the header. Um, at the same time, we don't want to be smashing against rocks. These things uh, only work as long as that honeycomb in there stays solid so if you're going to bash something you know you definitely want to bash a pipe you don't want to bash one of these so we're going to get under there and see how uh how close we can get it to put the catalytic converter up here obviously not resting on the frame rail but basically up against there but if you look over here this angle you can see that to put it here you know, if I had a, a pipe bender or something, you know, maybe that could be doable. Um, but I don't think, because it's also angled slightly like this, I don't know um, how well that's going to work. But basically, if we can put it right here and get it to tuck up under here a little bit, um, be pretty happy it's basically the same height as this um, I think that's just kind of part of the cost of running long tubes uh, the other thing is it seems really low to the ground because these front springs are completely sagged out you can see they're actually kind of an, uh, a frowny face and when this truck gets lifted four inches up in the air hopefully uh, this will be up out of the way so I think I've decided I'm gonna put it under here so these are slip fit um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece back off. We're going to trim it down um, until it's basically flush and then see how well that fits in here. So these are the mufflers I got. Um, they're an offset inlet centered outlet. Um, two and a half inch. I believe these are from, there we go. They're from uh, Jones Racing. Um, these are two chamber design. They actually are supposed to be fairly quiet for an aftermarket muffler. They were only 25 bucks. Now you might say, well, Max, I don't know, we want a race car, single chamber, Flowmaster, blah, 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 blah. 
And maybe if I was building like a eight second Camaro or something, I would want some crazy loud shrieking like muffler. Um, but when you're when you have a vehicle that's really meant to cover some miles between your house and the trailhead, and uh, maybe even go down to the beach like four hours away, and do some off roading down there, there's like I'm not losing any horsepower with this. Let's put it that way. And I'm not losing any torques, and it's not really going to cost me anything. It costs about the same as one of those race mufflers. But I would just as well have a nice deep rumble off idle, but uh, have a relatively quiet exhaust. Because you can always make it louder, but it costs money and time and cutting and welding to make it quieter. And so we're going to start off with these. I mean, if I really, really, really hate the sound, maybe a little later on we can go with something a little more aggressive. But I'm guessing that a true dual reasonably straight pipe 350 it it's gonna be just fine so we have everything kind of mocked up let me take you guys under here this is the first part that's been so important to me um, is this right here so if you look that shackle hanger is pretty much the lowest point of the exhaust um, you know there's that little exhaust nub right there that sticks out part of the flange then it immediately swings up above the frame and you can see the cat is nice and tucked and even back here the muffler is nice and tucked and we're going to basically just cap that with a turn down um, so everything is out of the way let me get down under here maybe give you guys a different angle so this is tacked this is tacked um, this is that s-bend i cut it and sectioned it um, this cat is tacked on the front. You can see we're running a bit of an angle. I don't, this is just a 15 inch piece. We can actually cut this down. It like runs all the way in here. Um, so we're probably gonna cut this guy down a little bit just cause it doesn't need to be that long. It probably doesn't need to go past this point here. Um, keep the GoPro kind of oriented in a way that makes sense. And then back here we have our muffler just sitting on a jack stand right now. You can see there's still, there's still some flex in here. Um, now the biggest thing we gotta figure out next is how exactly are we going to secure this there is a cross frame up here like a little bracket thing that holds the body um, that we can secure to and then weld to the muffler ideally I don't want to have too many hangers if I don't have to this heat shield thing um, I guess is from the original cat um, this is where the original catalytic converter location was that's the heat shield um, this should do pretty good it's like half covered under it I'm not not too worried about it um, if it becomes a problem, I can always add more aluminum up there or something. But uh, this muffler will go here. We got to figure out how to secure it. You can't really secure anything to this. This is just kind of flimsy aluminum. Um, and I don't want to build anything like that off of the frame. I feel that it looks kind of janky. Um, and I have these hangers, so I'm going to go and see if I can figure out a way to get the hanger to mount here and weld to the uh, to the muffler, but still be. Um, removable because you definitely want to be able to remove the exhaust system and service stuff um, so let me go grab those and see what they look like so these are the walker um, exhaust hangers these are great they're only two bucks a piece um, and basically the idea here is is this secures up to the body this secures to the exhaust it just welds on um, this has holes for drilling or spot welding um, and then it can basically rotate and flex on this. Um, but you need to have some space to be able to flex it out. And they do sell special pliers that help you with that. I don't have any, so we're just going to have to use regular pliers. But, uh, you know, we'll see how we can shape this. All right. So everything is in. Um, bolted up, kicks up. Lots of clearance for the... Uh, Catalytic converter, heat shield above it, keep the floor nice and cool. Little connector pipe. There's our muffler. It's pretty level with the frame rail. Hangs down a little bit, but I think it's okay because the drive shaft is here. So, and then a little little downward cut keeps shit out of the way. Um, now we got to start on the other side, which is going to be probably twice as hard. And this one took us two hours. Um, so I got a little bit more experience, but it's uh, it's going to be a rough one, I think. So one thing is I had to buy these uh, exhaust gaskets. They're solid aluminum. They're made by Mr. Gasket. Um, let me see. Part number 
is 7421G. Um, the factory gaskets that came with these headers are like real weak. One side sealed, one side didn't. This took care of the leak on the other side. We now have a leak free exhaust. Um, eventually I'm going to replace the other side as well, but uh, I'm about to go get it inspected here in about 20 minutes. So, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't leak right now and that's kind of all that matters. Let me take you guys underneath here. Okay, you've already seen this side. We got the header coming up. We got the uh, catalytic converter over here. Muffler hanging down right here. It's uh, latched in up there. On this side, we have the muffler here in the back and the cat up behind the transfer case. Same type deal. Well guys, after all that work, I went to the inspection place and they told me that uh, even if a vehicle came with catalytic converters from the factory, if it's over 25 years old in Texas, they just do a safety inspection. The guy didn't even like look at the truck at all. He just went in and uh, gave me uh, a sheet. So now we can go next week and register it. Um, so here's our list. Not bad for, uh, for one week. Um, there's list number two. We're going to get it started here in a minute. Um, basically, truck runs and drives good. I took it out uh, and, and hosed it down. It's uh, now kind of a dull, dull sheen to the whole thing, but at least it's clean. I got all the, um, all the mud and grit and shit out from underneath it. And I only got pulled over twice. It's about two miles from my house to the inspection. I got pulled over once on the way there and once on the way back. Both times, no issues. The guy was like, oh, you have one of these transit permits. It's real dumb that they don't give you something to print out on the outside of the vehicle. And I said, yes, sir, I completely agree. Uh, and then they let me go. Um, so 10 minutes of my time, not a big deal. Uh, I got the truck inspected. We can get it registered. The only real issue we have now is I the oil pressure light or the oil pressure gauge never worked uh, and I kind of was putting it off because it's behind the distributor requires removing the distributor uh, and I was like well you know it's a lot of work I don't really give a shit about the oil pressure gauge you know if the 350 takes the crap then I'll just uh, throw an LS in it like fuck it well <clears throat> I don't know if the camera can capture this but that is a fresh ish piece of cardboard and you can see it's covered in oil you might say Max you drove the truck four miles. Why is it covered in oil? Well, uh, there's basically an L fitting um, that, that angles the uh, oil pressure sensor out. And I noticed that it uh, was the whole backside, uh, everything was covered in oil and goop underneath. And I was like, well, fuck, I don't know what was leaking. First, that was the transmission, but after I re replaced the gasket, replaced the trans uh, filter, you guys may do, everything was clean. And it turns out that little L bracket where it bolts into the engine. I can basically turn it by hand um, and unfortunately with the sensor attached to it I can't go more than a quarter turn because of the firewall so we're gonna have to pull out the um, distributor and just redo that whole assembly give me a chance to fix the oil pressure gauge but it's not gonna be a lot of fun um, I'm not super familiar with like distributors and setting timings so we got to get it to top dead center and first uh, number one piston and then uh, pull it out so we can put it back with the timing all set correctly um, but it's a $15 part but it's going to require probably an hour or more of labor um, but after that happens I think that'll take care of our oil leak issue I don't see anything leaking anywhere else but it's kind of hard to tell with the with the volume of oil that's bubbling up out of there other than that the truck drives great uh, except for the fact that the front suspension is all sorts of fucked so generally, leaf springs do this kind of number. My leaf springs are sad. They have a sad face, uh, which is bad. So, um, probably going to do a lift kit here shortly because the cost of buying new OEM springs compared to the cost of just buying a lift kit is like pretty marginal. So we're probably going to do a four-inch lift all the way around. Was planning on doing that anyway. Was just kind of hoping to wheel it a little bit in stock mode. But uh, it's, it's just real bad. Like the front, the front end's real bad. Um, and it rubs really badly with the 33s. Because um, the 33s would be a stretch even at stock height. And we're probably an inch or two below stock height. Um, so anyway, long story short, we're going to do that. Uh, and you see that in an upcoming episode. 
If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, subscribe. Check out the Blazer uh, playlist down below. And uh, all of the parts that you see me use are in a Google Docs spreadsheet. So you can see how much I've spent on this project. You can follow the link. Uh, they're Amazon affiliate links. It helps out the channel if you buy something through them, even if it's not the, the thing that you buy is not the thing I link. Um, so I really appreciate that, guys. My name is Max. This is Max Works. Love you guys. Peace.